Hi everybody, welcome to the archive and another episode of The Vault. What we have here is a very special print. In September of 1954, Marilyn Milton did this spontaneous sitting at his studio. No client, no reason, just one of those times they were having fun, experimenting as they always did throughout their relationship. Milton is suing 20th Century Fox to get Marilyn out of her slave contract. She's disappeared from Hollywood and is living in hiding at my family's residences, both in Connecticut and in New York. She's feeling optimistic. She's in control of her career. They're going to start Mountain Road Productions. This image is from the Wicker series. Milton supplied the prop, the Wicker chair. Marilyn supplied the outfit from her personal wardrobe. It's a fantastic pedal pusher outfit designed by Jax, one of her favorite designers in New York. Throughout the series, every now and then, you'll see her with a drink. Whiskey, neat, in a simple glass. In this earlier period of that collaboration, a lot of the reasons behind doing the pictures were personal. It was really about Milton discovering other sides of Marilyn, and Marilyn being able to just be natural and come alive and have a good time. Because it was through that, that when she saw the pictures, she started seeing the side of herself that was different. Because she wasn't posed, and it wasn't a, a publicity picture with a lot of glamour and glitz or a lot of TNA. It was really her being a woman, naturally, a little bit of sense on fashion, but really it's about capturing a side of a personality. Here, with the help of music, a little bit of whiskey, neat, and the common friendship that they shared, they're having fun, doing spontaneous pictures. She's having a ball. What's interesting about this group of pictures that my father did was that he shot two and a quarter with his Roloflex, then he shot four by five and eight by ten film. Very rare. He didn't shoot a lot of eight by ten of Marilyn throughout their collaboration. This is one of the few times that he did. This particular picture is from one of the original eight by ten transparencies, which is really why there's so much detail in the pixels. This is one of the first images that we restored from Milton's collection. It was part of the early series, if you will. I think I did 12 pictures in three years. It was hell. Anyway, in those days, the only large format printer in the world was Nash Editions, funded and started by Graham Nash and run by Mac Holbert. Mac was the ultimate genius. He understood how printing work, he understood computers. But these guys were making this stuff up as they went along. They took an old printer called an Irish printer, which was really designed for offset proofing, and they cannibalized it. And they created an adapter where the heads were further away from the drum so that they can take a 500 gram piece of Arches watercolor paper and lay it on this big drum and then anchor it down with masking tape. And it would spin and spin. And these heads would sit there and deflect the ink so that only the ink that's supposed to hit them would hit the paper and all the rest would drip on the ground. It was a mess. At the end of the day, it would take two and a half hours to make a print this size. And you'd usually get one good print out of three attempts. Very wasteful, old school, early days. Mac was one of my great mentors, still is to this day. Bless you, Mac. You know, a lot of people poo-poo digital printmaking. Well, let me tell you, this was a hands-on process to the point of mounting the paper and doing the work. Then also, they'd take the print off, let it dry. They'd hang it from a clothesline in the top of the studio, and they would dry for a day. Then they'd take them down, put the prints face down, get a big straight edge, and they would bend the paper back against the straight edge and rip it. And that's how you get this decalage. It's really done by hand. The other reason that makes this print special is that it actually was made for somebody. A friend of mine, he used to work for me. His name was Mark, M-A-R-C. And he helped me build our first website for the company many years ago. I chose to make this print available because it never was part of my collection. It really was a gift that was made for somebody else. It's made its way back into my possession. And so I'm looking for a mark. Not a con, but a mark. M-A-R-C.
The print is also personalized to Mark. Could never have gotten here without you. He helped me build my first website, get the company off the ground. We spent almost two and a half years on it, 94, 95, 96. It was a great ride. The prints of this image that we sell today sell for $3,000 and they're editions of only 15. This print is the number five artist proof. It's very rare because every artist proof was different as they were getting made, as we were studying the process, the paper, the color, the inks. So neither one of them is perfect, but they're all special, they're all custom. Whether you're a Maryland fan and want an amazing picture, or your name is Mark, or you know somebody named Mark, or you don't care and you want to have this print, all of which are great. I'll entertain a good offer, be happy to make a deal with you. I want it to go to someone who wants it. There's one more group of people that might be interested. The historians of the digital printmaking process. This represents a piece of history. So much so that Nash Edition prints are part of the Library of Congress permanent collection, documenting the period of time. This period of 1996 and 7 was breakthrough time. What Nash did with the Irish printer is a piece of history. So is this.